we're going to get started. Um, this is the Master Plan Implementation Committee. It is Tuesday, November 6th. And I think if we could go around, since some are here for the first time, introduce ourselves, and we'll begin that way. And um, just say a couple of things about yourself. Sure. Your Michael Rosenberg, um, citizen at large. I was formerly on the Finance Committee. Took a little break and decided to volunteer for this. How long were you on finance? Too long. <laughs> four years? Three Something. years? Three, three or four, four years. Four years, yeah. And he was the chair of yes. finance for those years. Mm -hmm. so. Good. Chris Fowles, citizen at large also. Uh, first time on any committee in Southampton. <laughs> Just returned back home after years in working in D.C. and overseas. So. Looking forward to getting involved. Okay. I'm Megan, uh, I'm representing the Parks Commission, and I'm currently in college. Okay. I'm Cindy Palmer, um, on um, planning board, representing planning board for this committee, but I'm also on the Open Space Review Committee and Almonds and the um, Library Trustees. Good see. Christine Madsen representing historical. Okay. And Francine Tishman representing the select board. I formerly served with Mike on the finance committee. I was on for six years. Um, I'm the treasurer for the Friends of Southampton Council on Aging. And part of my responsibilities on the select board is I'm the liaison to the Norris School and to the Hampshire Regional High School in addition to this. And we have with us Barbara LaFlam is our guest this evening. Okay. All right. So we can begin. As I said, my role here in leading the discussion is just temporary until we decide among ourselves who should take the leadership role. So I'll just begin in, um, with the meeting minutes that Cindy, I believe, sent out to everyone. If you had a chance to review them, if you have any comments. I thought she did a great job mm -hmm. ca capturing yes. the discussion last week. Well, there is an error, a very yes. important error. Um, I don't know what I was thinking, but I said that tonight's meeting was not tonight, that it was the 11th of November. So that's a correction on those minutes. OK. Um, I don't know. Is there a motion to accept the minutes? Mm -hmm. So moved. <laughs> okay. Second? Second. Second. All right. Any more discussion? So with the change in the in the correction of the date of tonight's meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Hi, Jim. Hi. We Hi, just went around and voted. Introduced <laughs> yes, we accepted the minutes of last week's, uh, last, our last meeting. So, look, you met everyone else last week. I did. Except for? Michael Rosenberg. Hi, Michael. Jim Seney. Nice to meet you, Jim. Nice to meet you. And Jim is representing the Housing, Housing Authority. Authority. Okay. And Mike is the at member large. at large. Great. Okay. And we still have one more vacancy. <coughs> Just go there one more time. <laughs> yeah. Did you have I never you heard back. Any? You never heard back. Did you? Uh, no, you I don't. With? No, okay. I, I didn't know who you were referring okay. to. Okay, George. But I don't know okay. who George Oh, is. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> all. I'm just, that's <laughs> okay. so I'm going to go. Sorry. Oh, oh, George uh, Clough. I just, yes. his yeah. surname was never added to yes. the George, so that's, <laughs> that, that <laughs> was who. Well, I was going to say it'd be happy to have a, uh, another young person. Oh, yes. Okay. I'm excited. I just saw four people who I'm old, so I can't be sure, but I think they're in their early 20s voting. Good. That was Good. Great. <laughs> I was saying before someone told me there's something like 75% turnout. Yeah, I came in about 10:30 this morning, and it was as packed this morning as it is now. Yeah, it's it's a good time. I was number 2946. Yeah, out of 4,100, and that was a half hour ago. So okay. Do they count the early voters in that count? Uh, some of them had been processed. Yeah. Man, much, many of them had been processed, but not all. Maybe not all. Of them. It is an yeah. amazing turn. Yeah. Okay. okay, so with the minutes, um, 
do you want to review our reading first and have that discussion about chapter one or do you want to do some updates of I have some information to share with you based on um, sure yeah. okay all right um, we talked about going back to the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to see what residual support from the original work that they did with us could be available. Um, it turns out that no one who worked with us on the original is still with the organization. So I started with a new person, her name is Susan Westa, and we had um, a brief conversation. She, she had access to, to our plan, wanted to know specific, I asked about um, their consultation services. Um, did they charge by the hour? Did they charge by the project? Um, she said they charged by the project. I kind of hesitated and she said there are grants available that they would help us secure for consultation services. Um, I said I didn't know yet where, where we were headed. We were just real thinking that we might need some assistance down the line and wondering if they would be willing to do that. So. Um, I'll read to you her response. Um, what I did send her is something that we looked at last week, which was the summary of what I believe to be our progress towards the goals that I could glean from the material that I had. So I shared that with her. And uh, so let me just read, I'll just, I'll just read the, when we're down here. The items on the list you sent me have all been achieved, is that correct? And we're in the process of verifying that. For people on their respective committee, if you go back to your committee, just confirm with your committee that they did that, in fact, um, at your next meeting. For those committees that are not represented, I'm going to ask that we get volunteers from our at-large members to check in with like agriculture, um, the Council on Aging Library, you know, we have historical planning, conservation, parks, and uh, I'm a library, and so I can do that. Okay, all right. So we'll go through those a little bit. But anyway, so to verify whether or not they've been achieved. She said, are we looking for assistance determining what's next? I think all of the other short term items you haven't completed in the plan would be next. So she's giving us a little bit of guidance. Uh, would a list of 10 next 10 to 12 items be useful? I think we'd have to go through the list together and have the town identify the next priorities, obviously. Um, and uh, are you ultimately looking for a proposal with costs? And that would, that would be it, but we just have to see what exactly we would do, what we would want to tackle first. First confirming and then identifying for the remaining goals with your respective committees, those that we think are most readily achievable and those in which everyone feels would be a priority as the next step. So that's just, that's just the beginning. I'm not making, again, any decisions. I'm just trying to put some parameters around next steps that to me would be logical if people don't agree, you know, certainly chime in. This is a this is a group effort. Do you okay? Do you know if they have updated demographic information? Because so we were on you read the languages were we're in this upward trend, but if we've stalled in something in the last mm -hmm. eight years then it changes the it should change the goal that was or at exactly least the look question, of the goal. Right. Chapter one had a lot of data in that that yeah. I, right. I know right. is not 100 percent correct. Right. Right. There was 2010, what was it? Yeah, or 2008 right. data or something, which right. means yeah. it was collected in 07, so you're right. it's over 10 years old. Some right. of it, so. Okay. I know that every year we all fill out those census for the town. Um, we can talk with Janine and see it's if online. they can I consolidate up, that. Can, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I just want to make another point about Susan mm -hmm. Wester. Susan is the um, planning board's uh, PVPC consultant, okay. new, newly appointed, because okay. the gentleman who was named Larry Smith is uh, retired, and he's he's helping planning board with some tail ends of things that he's involved in, specifically the the marijuana bylaws that are going okay. to go to a public hearing soon. And as and as I was looking at the goals. The things that pertain to planning board. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking to myself, 
you, Susan Westa, under the, you know, under the umbrella of planning board, that and you know, save a little you. money there, if you will, if it's already planning board. The planning board meeting is tomorrow night, the first one since our last meeting, and I'm going to bring this up, um, okay. obviously, at the planning board. But there's also other stuff on the agenda, so I don't know how much they okay. can address tomorrow night. So. Okay. Well, that, that would make, that would, that would be a great um, way to get started with that. I mean, she may, it would be something that I think serves both purposes, the planning board says, exactly. as well as ours. That's a, that's a very good thought. I'm glad. I'm glad about that. Can't guarantee it. We're going to reach the planning no, board. No, we can, we can ask and we can check and then see. I, we, I know your whatever project you have for working on, but if somehow there can be some overlap with to, to what extent is the planning board looking at the master plan and whatever their activities are. I mean, are they, well, are they I don't know that they're looking at the master plan. Okay. What they're doing is kind of going along. Um, and I think if we're going to accept um, things that we saw here, at, for example, the first one of, of, under chapter one housing, I think planning, you can see that planning board was listed as part of it. So. Um, and I noticed in chapter one some examples of recommendations, including expanding the size of accessory apartments. Mm -hmm. And I know that that was in the draft revised bylaws. I've only been on the planning board since May, and I'm learning a lot, like every minute. But I know that was one of the things that, and in fact, was part of the draft to in increase the size of the accessory apartment. Which is so, so chances are, as we said last week, some of this. The few that are on here are ones that we had understood from the previous committee what, right. what they thought had been done. From material that was left right. for me, the ones that right. I... Right. But there are still many, many more strategies under each oh, department yes. that Absolutely. aren't even here, right? But then, we didn't we say last week that we weren't sure that even what was here was fully completed? There might be some that were in process right. and partially, That's but then it may be other things that have been completed. So, yeah, it sounds like we really, <laughs> really need to have that consultation back with We need to with bring the, it uh, to the various something together. It's going to take some time. I mean, yeah. I don't know, I hate to take planning board meeting time. I don't know if Paul Demon or somebody will meet with me on a one-on-one, -on -one or Susan okay. Westa or Larry Smith or somebody to get me focused on what's there and what, you know. Well, there, is there an easier way in terms of like meeting minutes or something rather than having to bother somebody's time? Yeah, that was an issue too. The minutes didn't always get. Okay. Um, anyway, I would okay. like to ask some Yeah, questions. no, it just seems like we've got to do some updating. I mean, right, I think so, yeah, this, this <laughs> is, well, the last report we had from the previous implementation committee was 2015. Yeah. So this, I'm assuming, is what was completed at that time. Yeah. Um, so I'm hopeful that other things have gone on since then. They just haven't been recorded anywhere. So if each of you would go back to your committees, verify if, in fact, what we assume, what I've assumed is completed by virtue of this list, and then, as Chris is suggesting, going through the rest of the, the strategies that your respective committee was responsible for and kind of doing an update, and then we can kind of cut and paste and produce a more comprehensive document and better have a better understanding of what's been done and what we can build on and what would be the next logical steps to take. Okay. Okay. All right. But it, all, it all ties in with you know our, our thought last week that we've really got to sit down and really read each chapter and get mm -hmm. totally familiar with <laughs> with the contents of ourselves okay. before we can even understand it. And we may, I would assume, we encounter people on these other commissions or on the other boards that are new too, and they may or may not know how much has been done even in their own bailiwick, right? So it's true. we need to be, also be able to explain to them what it is we're asking, I think, and I surely don't feel com you know comfortable about that right now. So no. yeah, it's kind of the cart before the horse. I guess I'm not sure how far we want to go with the Planning Commission people, just to let them know that we're maybe interested, but if we can tag team with anything right. else, oh, that yes. might be, I, would yeah, be good. I was just inquiring sure, if yeah. we had any residual credit out there that mm. we might tap yeah, that's for great. our purposes. <laughs> That was not the case. We have no one left over from the previous yeah. arrangement, so yeah. we're yeah. Yeah. we're doing this all. And this is going to be a, a big learning curve, not just mm -hmm. for us, but as you as you mentioned, the the other committees who were involved 
many of whom have new members as well. Yeah. Just bringing everybody up to speed and getting everybody on the same page. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's a good sign. So the demographics, what, uh, in general, what else jumped out? Or we can just dive into chapter one and start talking and discussing. I will yeah. say one thing. Um, they mentioned that there's a southhamptonmasterplan.org. Um, mm -hmm. That's no longer in use. There's actually quite an extensive one. Um, it's, it's part of the PVPC one. But it has a ton of data and like definitions and stuff that we may be able to use to our advantage. I know it's really small, but um, it has the planning process and you know the back end of it that we don't have necessarily in the document. I see. So, just wanted to look at that. so I need to understand this. So there's no longer a ton of Southampton linked to the master plan. However, there is one on the PVPC in, site. In the document, there's. Um, in which document? This document. The master plan okay. document. There is um, the website SouthamptonMasterPlan.org, and that no longer no, exists. No longer exists. Okay. I think they probably, if I. Did they use that to, to you know, to get input from citizens? Yeah, it's fine there. Okay. I was asking if that was just the mechanism they used to get input from citizens. Um, it has polls on it, okay. too. And okay. it has all the data that the polls collect So okay. it has a lot more than at least what chapter than what's one. in here. Yeah. Okay. So what is oh, the website that does um, it? Southampton.masterplan.pvpc.org. Yeah, no. uh -huh. That one's up. Yeah. That one's up. And it's planning process, document history. Um, I think it could be a really good resource for us. Um, more data. Coming, yes. You know, yeah. Into it from okay. three years ago. All right. Could you just say that? Way? It's yeah. southampton.masterplan.pvpc.org. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All the background references. Mm -hmm. And definitions on everything in sequence. Or three pages worth. That was brilliant. Wow. <laughs> well, I saw Thank a URL you. and I clicked it and it didn't go anywhere. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else for the general welfare before we start talking about updates? Okay. All right. That, that's good. Um, I can look back into, into that information. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, in terms of the conversation here, what jumped out of If you want to go page by page, again, so that we all come away with the same understanding of this, of this information, or you just want to... I, I just say, in general, I noticed it looks like the planning Commission has its work cut out for it. most of the recommendations mm -hmm. jump back to the planning commission, mm -hmm. which I don't know if there's intent there or that's just how it lines up, but it seems heavily weighted that way. And so that that body's got a lot of work to do. And it concerns me. Um, I will say again, <coughs> I'm brand new on it, and I'm learning all the time. It seems that the planning board, planning board, not commission, is. Um, has a, a whole body of work that comes all the time, you know, people bringing in plans mm -hmm. for uh, approval or A&R, approval not required, and there's, you know, you know, architects or, um, um, what do we want to say, you know, people that come in with their, uh, plot, plans. their plot plans yep. and that just seems to take up all the time, that plus this bylaw review that's been going on. And I think I said last week that when the question came up about who on the planning board would like to represent the planning board at this meeting, the people who are have been on it for a while kind of went, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> and because I'm interested in seeing, as I said last week, more work done on this, I volunteered and I went, yay, Cindy, and I'm the least informed. I, it's not my background, it's not my expertise at all, and I'm brand new at it. So I'm a little concerned, like you are, Jim, that it's 
a, a tremendous is, is pointing to the planning board and, and how reasonable is it for us to see them getting it done. That's, I think, where I'm going with that. Unless somehow, and I'm, I'll bring it up and see what happens. I will make that point at the meeting tomorrow night and see what kind of response I get. Mm -hmm. I think that's where prioritizing comes will in. have to come in. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll, we can decide what really needs to be tackled by planning board. If, if you remember, a comment I made last time is my observation during the authoring of this was that there were a, a lot of goals um, tossed out and, you know, then it was designated by the committee who would handle them and I thought at the time that it was an awful lot for certain, certain committees. Yeah, yeah. But there wasn't a lot of prioritizing in that, when, uh, in that original mm -hmm. committee. It was just getting down, you know, getting down the overview, and I think that that'll have to be part of what this committee does. In the mm -hmm. And I guess the other thing we need to be thinking about as we go through this material, because these are joint goals. These none of them exist for with, for one single committee or, or board. Mm -hmm. So we've got to think about mechanisms to have people working together or doing their piece of that particular goal and making certain that we all agree that for which ones we we designate that everybody agrees that those are the priorities and they're going to be committed to working toward them because if you know one committee does the, their share and then the other three lag behind we won't we won't have that either so there's a lot of commitment that needs to be made and understanding so i guess at some point in time very early on in this process we're going to have to probably meet with each of those committees somehow, or the committee chairs somehow, I agree. to get to get their buy-in to this and to get them to you know devote time and effort to getting some of this accomplished. But we're not going to get it done. Yeah. Especially, I was just looking at one now where the one of the strategies on chapter one is planning board, select board, and conservation commission. So, mm -hmm. getting like you say, getting the coordination, even getting a body. Right. Representing each of them to sit down with us for an hour would be, you know, probably a, an obstacle we'll face. I'm sure. Was there, um, was there sort of a charter direction given from the select board on this? You know, because some of these you talk about require a lot of effort. Some require a lot of funds. Some are sort of pie in the sky goals that, you know, at first blush you you may want to just table those immediately because you can't get there. And I was curious if there was a sort of a goal for 10% of the recommendations or a certain number that we hit in each group to be, to try to implement and then you move on to the others because you could, you could almost get lost in each goal when you start looking at how many committees need to meet, the resources needed to just meet goal 1.1 of chapter one. Mm -hmm. right. No, I agree with you. So I didn't know if there was a, kind of a direction on how they wanted to go? There wasn't. Okay. And I'm thinking that I think once we go through this document and kind of get the lay of the land that maybe we can produce something and share it and say this is what we're going to be, we think is achievable. Mm -hmm. um, and go from there. I don't. I don't think anyone, myself included, is so well acquainted with this document that we could we could make that decision unless it comes from the originators. And I didn't see any prioritization. Of, yeah. No, it's only um, just remember. I think last week we talked about those that were listed at the back in the big table there that mm -hmm. talked about ongoing, and then the ones that were theoretically the one to five year goals, and then the longer goals. Right. And mm -hmm. here we are, you know, somewhere in the midpoint of the one to five year goals. So mm -hmm. theoretically, I guess the one to five year I ones would be the ones the that one we would at least start to focus on and say, okay, mm -hmm. even out of these, are they mm -hmm. doable <laughs> or have they been done? But I mean, I uh, yeah, I, it's it's a big. Um, like some of these <laughs> are very stuff. even. Chapter one, right? You talk about the. The affordable housing and you know going from 1.7 percent affordable housing to 10 percent. I mean, realistically, if the development isn't there, in I 
know the town doesn't have funds to purchase the land for the development or purchase homes for the development, you know, that's a that's a very difficult goal if someone's not going to build mm -hmm. large housing units somewhere in town. And there's another big barrier, and that's the wastewater, lack right. of wastewater mm -hmm. um, infrastructure, mm -hmm. too. Right. Yeah. But there, there are the, C, uh, the um, CPA funds in for housing and right. that have never been tapped, I don't mm -hmm. think. And mm -hmm. it would be nice to think that there could be some progress because right. there's been zero. And, and they mentioned single family habitat houses, or there were some other groups. You know, so those single families could be easier, right, without the wastewater constriction. Or, or existing look, homes, too. Yeah, or you look at duplexes or something, right. a modest approach rather than to try to tackle mm -hmm. it once. Right. Yeah. So, so the effort's there and are kind of right. moving forward. And so the, yeah. you know, your committee, when you go back to them, would be, you know, to, to, to have a discussion about what, what is practical and feasible. Right. What does We've been having those discussions, but yeah. it just reinforces it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, because the comparative towns are also, they're not comparable. Right, Amherst, Springfield, Holyoke, yeah. like right. completely different towns, completely different demographics. We're, it doesn't kind of, line up. Yeah, I mean, we, we're kind of in the middle because we border Holyoke. Uh, right. And we border West Hampton. And they couldn't be two different towns mm -hmm. as far as mm -hmm. when you compare those two. So what are we? Yeah. <laughs> are we West Hampton or are we Holyoke? Probably neither. Neither. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, your point is well taken. We're certainly not going to readily catch up to 10 percent if ever. No. Um, so I, I think it's a, you know, we need to make progress. We need to make well. progress. We're not making any yeah. progress. The goal is the just that. It's a goal. Yeah. I mean, you, you, but you want to show that you're trying to make some progress toward that goal, whether you actually get there mm -hmm. in five right. years or 15 years. Is or story. identify what the barriers are. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it may be the responsibility then of another committee to do something before. Yeah, to make the conditions possible. Right. Right. I think the 10% was established by the state. Right. state. Correct. Yes. But yes. there was a, a um, bylaw passed two years ago that was significantly less. And I, yes. I wondered if... Um, if it, uh, local bylaw? Yeah, the Southampton bylaw um, uh, regarding um, affordable housing, a percentage of affordable housing. And it was... It, I was wondering if that 1.7 was what that was, but that wouldn't have been referred to in, you know, this, was in this, yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. yeah. And I, but it was far, far less than the 10%. Mm -hmm. But if we could at least achieve that percentage, mm -hmm. rather than 0%, that would be some progress. Mm -hmm. Did that bylaw tie in with the zoning change that they had about, you know, over 10 units you have to include in affordable? I thought that was the bylaw. But maybe, yeah. yes, maybe yeah. so. Yeah, so was that just two years ago or three that years ago? Be, that's right. how they would get to 10% of the development if they would but even 10 there, units or more. Right. Even there, so it's this. being eluded. Right. You know, that it's not, there hasn't been one affordable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's gotten around by building nine units. That's right. That's, right. that's, that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. So, unless in multiples in one location. Well, as long as we're talking specifically about that, about affordable housing, and the Housing Committee Board is very, very eager to see that happen. There are the CPA funds that can't be touched because they're earmarked for affordable housing. So housing, yeah, is that just affordable? I don't know. Anyway, housing. My question is, is there a demand from residents? Are there people? that are coming forward and saying, when is Southampton going to do this? Oh, I think so. I think so. I mean, not maybe not elders, uh, yeah, people who want to stay in town, young people who want to stay in town just can't. I don't know whether they're coming out and saying so, but this but The demographics it. show that there is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if we was, you could just we get some information just to see, you know, from the assessor's office about people, not their names specifically, but, you know, the number of households who have requested tax reductions and produced documentation to support their request. 
I mean, that says something about afford their ability to afford. Or the mortgage market. Mm -hmm. Right, I mean, realistically, that could also be loans being handed out to people because they were pre-approved for much larger than they can afford. Mm -hmm. Well, th yes, that too. <laughs> Because we right. bought a house a couple of years ago, and the pre-approval amount was beyond what we could afford, but they put it on a piece of paper that we could afford it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's up to you to decide, really. Yeah. But I, I think But that gets into demographics, too, about, like, what's the age group, right? So mm -hmm. I think a lot are, you know, seniors on fixed incomes. Right. Okay. But it's only also for a young family, young people who want to move in with the houses. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, the mm -hmm. cost of housing here, it's pretty hard for us. Mm -hmm. And just to throw something in, I was reading Money Magazine. Massachusetts is the fourth highest income state in the country in order to be able to afford to buy a home. Yeah. Washington, D.C., California, Hawaii, California, then Massachusetts, oh, really? more than New York. Well, Connecticut. So, I mean, that kind of puts a little perspective here. <coughs> Connecticut's housing is slightly lower to the taxes, too. Right. Because when we looked, because if you go, you know, 20 miles south, you can pick up a comparable for less money, but you pay the taxes, right? And then you, you move from state to state, so then you pay twice, but depending where you work. But yeah, it's amazing. All right, so um, in terms of digging in on the demographics or getting something more current, is there any volunteers on, on the numbers of, of residents and the growth? And then if we can get some information on the bylaw, what was the content, you know, is it really, did they change it from 1.7, have we met it, have we exceeded it, have they increased it? I can look up some demographics. Okay, now. okay. And I can confirm the bylaw. Okay. Uh, I don't, I don't think they change. First of all, understand that I'm new to this process also, but my understanding is, you know, this is Massachusetts Chapter 40 E and B law, so a town can't change. They can make their own goals, maybe, for what before, but they can't yes. arbitrarily say, we're going to meet 5% and supersede 40 A and B. That's, so whether we may, whether the town created a bylaw for a goal for itself almost is irrelevant. Um, I think the more relevant piece is there was an attempt to, by zoning, force affordable housing. And my understanding of the history of that is the, the original goal was five units, and there was pushback, and so it went to 10. And so what you see are a bunch of what, several nine unit. Right. Developments. Well, likewise, you would have seen four instead of five. Well, um, maybe. But see, that's, uh, and I'm, I don't know about this much about contracting, obviously, mm -hmm. but you know, obviously, building four units and making it profitable on a piece of land is harder than building nine. So maybe, maybe you don't build, or mm -hmm. so the number makes a difference. Um, reason for the pushback was the original. As I understand it, five was the original proposal. Okay. Especially but I'll, I'll confirm that uh, All right. from people who've been on the Housing Authority longer than me, Housing Board. But it was for that reason. It was to give them the wiggle room, the developers, but not have them be It's my understanding. So they would be making nine nine unit rather than ten unit mm -hmm. areas, so they wouldn't have to put in that for an right. affordable yeah. housing unit. Right. right. So. Now we have someone here <laughs> who <laughs> will know the bylaw. Do you know? <laughs> Barbara, do you know? <laughs> the, the bylaw was passed by the town for the right reason. It had a detrimental effect. They say sometimes you don't get the result that you hope to get. For example, the Cook County Road Project after the bylaw changed, the town, oh, the developer would have been able to put in 14 units rather than the um, the 10 that were originally designed for that. So sometimes 
we try to pass things to get a result and the result that we get is not what we had hoped for. There again, a developer will take a parcel of land and rather develop more of it, will limit how much he wants to develop to get nine units rather than 10 units. Mm -hmm. And then later on, a number of years later, do another development from the same parcel that again will do nine mm -hmm. units. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you don't get And how, how do we let that happen though? I'm, I'm, I'm very very new to this, but I mean, I, how does, how does that get approved to? How does it not, happen? though? Is it the, the memory of the planning board that they forgot that they approved it originally and they just? No, it's no. that we ended up deciding to um, try to sell it to the town and that is what ultimately happened. It wasn't developed. It was um, a project for um, East Hampton, South Hampton, and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts simply because the family agreed to do that approach. But you are on, from what I understand in South Hampton, this project on 6 Coleman Road, um, is that, that could be for affordable housing? Six Coleman. You're not familiar no. with that? No, no. All right, well maybe I'm, I'm speaking out when I speak here. No, it's okay. Um, the Six Coleman Road project. Okay, I, I am. I'm sorry. I am. Yeah, is is uh, the big red barn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, near the bike trail, but that has an added feature in that in that location, Southampton should be able to tap into East Hampton's sewer system. Whereas in another section of town, that would not be possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it could be multiple family units. Right. Mm -hmm. The other parcel that the town owns is the parcel that used to be the Grange. Now that could be developed for affordable housing as soon as or after um, determination is made about the safety complex, et cetera. So there are there are possibilities if we take and have the vision to be patient and put it into an overall master plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or use it as towards the goal that was established. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess just to, my comment was, you know, how can you, you were saying how can you not, or how can we not approve it, but I guess to me I'm seeing it as, as an obvious intent to, to avoid doing the right thing, <laughs> obviously, and, right. and I'm just sort of surprised that somehow we go along with that and, and not, not make the developer abide by the rules or by the by the goal that the town has and, and you know but anyway I guess that's past history right. so I guess going forward our, our well, I think yeah. it's ongoing quite oh it's ongoing okay well, well if, maybe, right. yeah. if you think about it it's nine it's nine taxable properties or it could be none in terms of revenue for the town I, I, I'm not in the meetings I've never sat in but mm -hmm. you know as a developer if you're given the opportunity to build nine as you would like to or build 10 as you may not like to. You, you do the nine, you're still making a profit and the town's still receiving the income for the development and the... But it's know. not an, it's not profitable to the town. Mm -hmm. Well, you're increasing the tax up. base on the nine Yes, towns. you are, but the services, can, it can be argued that the services for those nine houses are greater than the tax revenue. Right, there's a break-even point. But you don't you don't know who's going to move in there, right? So it's the it's the two child rule, it's right? So a family with two children breaks the breaks their their tax input to the town because it, the cost to educate those two children basically eats up the majority of their tax dollars. It doesn't leave any left for other municipal services. But you don't know who's moving in those houses, you know. So you, it does make it difficult. <laughs> Well, the interesting here, thing here about in, when we talk about demographics and then checking and seeing if, if they're still consistent with what we read, 
that the growth is in the upper age range, that the number of people moving in with children or kids in school, you know, is declining. So we should be able to make a little more mm. on the tax than when you think right. about it in that re in, in some mm -hmm. instances right. except that some of these people then fall into that category of not being able to afford and getting abatements and so on and so forth i i don't know, mm -hmm. you know but i think that demographic shows the falls into the affordability and what south Hampton is building mm -hmm. and who's moving in and again what worries me is um, the Housing Authority Board is what about people who've lived here all their life and they can't afford to live in the big rambling house they've been in all their life and they want to mm -hmm. stay in town, they can't afford to stay in town. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. And again, <coughs> I see this in a lot of neighboring towns um, where the people who provide our public safety can't afford to live in that town, mm -hmm. um, which mm -hmm. is a shame. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's what motivates me to try to look at this more comprehensively than simply profit and loss, which yes. is, it can't be dismissed, it's important, but there's other factors. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, I think some of the things that are said, you know, some of the language that's in here I thought was actually really well, well done. I mean, there's a lot of proactive statements in here that sound very good, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, I think that you know, the housing needs assessment, again, was done in 2008, so we're 10 years behind the curve to really know what any of the new demand is or if it's really stagnant or are there more people, you know, wanting to come but just can't afford it. Um, but I think that the notion in just the introduction of the chapter about, you know, managing residential growth proactively so that we can keep the rural character and still have a vibrant town, I mean, I think that's, a, that's what we should be aiming for. So I really think we've got to make sure that the actions that are mentioned here, you know, go along with that really well. And, and to the extent that we've got things that are sort of skirting on the outsides and meeting, you know, nine-tenths of the law, I think we've, <laughs> we've got to be a little bit mm -hmm. more uh, attentive to that, I think, if we're going to maintain this idea. <laughs> An observation, given this discussion now about how we don't have the most current demographic information, um, and even the fact that we've had more development, even since this last master plan was published, or the data on which the master plan was based, which preceded the publication. That, yes. Um, I'm wondering if these strategies, goals and strategies for, for housing, this first chapter, mm -hmm. rather than jumping into say we need to go to all of these, we need to do 1A, 1B, 2, you know, whatever, we can't decide fully until we get the more updated information. Um, and part of the process for developing the master plan in the first place was to go before the town and we called them focus groups last week or whatever word was used, to think about whether this group, not necessarily in the next two months, but maybe three or four or five months down the road, needs to convene some groups within the town to find out if these are still the goals that we want to reach specific to this. I mean, to, to go and change things and then find out the whole or part of our town's thinking has altered, would this be the right thing to do? I'm just going to throw that out. Some of them are just wondering if they're the right thing, if they really are exactly what we should be putting our efforts into. Well, this was a plan that they wrote to carry us to 2030. Mm -hmm. So, because I see your point. That makes this is, this is, this is, yes, there's always, there's always going to be change. Yeah. Right. But I hear what you're saying. Well, we're at a slight. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. We're at a slight disadvantage because no action was taken mm -hmm. to speak of on the master plan when it was fresh. So here it's five years old already, mm -hmm. and not very much has been done. So indeed, some things would be outdated. I would think at this point. But it, to balance what you're saying, and I think this is what you're challenging, is that 
I think we could be we could be overly cautious and not move at all. Yeah. And I don't think I think we need to move okay. um, um, and take a chance and guess the best we can. Mm -hmm. You know, we can gather some data. It sounds like pretty quickly, but kind of redoing this almost to me seems oh. well I don't good intent. Yeah, yeah, no, I, so. redoing, just, I think you I think well, you can I know you weren't it. saying redoing, yeah, but yeah. even you know it, can, yeah. it would yeah. I think it would slow us down. Yeah. Um, it might help us prioritize things mm -hmm. differently than just going through the list. Mm -hmm. Um if we have this other information and looking at it through kind of a different lens, we might shift a little bit, but if we go back and start rewriting all of this, or yeah. you know, no, I don't think it's not, no, I don't think that's, think that's, that's not, not that's not, yes. yeah. Yeah. I think okay. we need to just, I think we can tweak, them, what we tweak think things, and if something is really, and you know, update them, yeah, yes. out in left field, and it really makes no sense now because of something, mm -hmm. then be I obvious. think, you know, it would be obvious, and we'd have justification right. to say that. Yeah, to because I think going back and talking to the respective committees, you're going to find out what progress, and then I, I think, Cindy, mm -hmm. you were the one who raised, we need to find out what are the barriers. I mean, maybe some of these, or Christina, mm -hmm. that was your point. Um, but finding out what were some of the barriers that prevented them from achieving more of the strategies that were outlined. So there may be some very logical explanations and we just I have that understanding and move on. One thing that's an issue now um, that I don't think was attended to very much in the authoring of the master plan, but um, our water situation is one that really needs to be kept in mind. We are, as the chairman of the Water Commission said, we're this close to capacity for our town well. And so we're, we've tapped into East Hampton, but this is, this is quite a challenge, I think, for Southampton and perhaps mm. one of our biggest challenges is to ensure that there is sufficient water for the homes that we are allowing to be developed mm -hmm. and um, I, th I think in all of the discussions now regarding future development that really needs to be kept very much at the forefront and learning exactly you know, how that, or, or that needs to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. You know, it needs to come into public discussion. That's a really silly point, because when you talk about trying to build the commercial or industrial base, mm -hmm. that requires a lot of water. If you're talking about mm -hmm. large residential units to meet uh, an affordable housing goal, that's a large amount. Water that's that is true, but it's also for all of the other the kinds of developments that have come in. That's right. an issue, and that's been given not much consideration. You know, large developments have gone in, mm -hmm. and we've we've tapped our Actually, one well. Right. We have just the one well to this close to capacity. Well, yeah, you're right. The developments have landscaping and mm -hmm. irrigation and swimming pool. <laughs> you know, in, in terms of and, and in terms of building codes for these developments, I've heard of this concept of gray water. You know about mm -hmm. that kind of using it for other purposes. It's not potable, but you can use it. Mm -hmm. um, building requirements for those kinds of things. I don't know if they're they're part of our towns, but I mean, when you think about, you know being close to capacity, mm -hmm. that would be something to consider if they're going to use irrigation systems. Exactly. How much of the town is on town water versus wells? Do we? I don't know, most of Gun Road is wells. <laughs> yeah, I, think. I don't know. I know. I'm just curious, I was just thinking about that. But that Pequot Pond is on town water? Mm -hmm. That's a piece of the demographic that needs to be updated yeah. because uh, where I live on the corner of Glendale and Cold Spring, when we moved in, we had a well. Mm -hmm. It was not 
and we had also, I think that house had not terribly long before we moved in, gone onto Town Water. I don't know when they brought Town Water down mm -hmm. Glendale Road. Are you yeah, in Town yeah, Water? Yeah. You're in Town Water? Um, but we no longer use that well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then I heard some comment at the meeting last night. The, is it possible to do both Town Water and yes. well? It is? Mm -hmm. I must have misunderstood. That was the open space. Uh, review committee and CONCOM uh, we met last night. Mm -hmm. Another reason I thought somebody said you can't do both, but you can. Mm -hmm. You can do both. Because we were going to use the well just for watering our lawn. Right. That's why a lot of people do Yeah. Mm -hmm. This summertime for lawn and pool. Because and yeah. you can, you know, your top off your pool and your meter isn't spinning. Yeah. But the question you're asking, what percentage of our town, and, and I, we know that right now um, there is a um, actually a, a grant being written to um, get money for um, the Water Commission grant to, to get money to purchase a, a, a piece of land that's considered a recharge district for our town. That's right on Glendale Road. And that was part of what was the meeting last night, Open Space Review Committee and Conservation Commission. And um, all the towns and uh, all of the planning boards are going to be asked to write a letter of support. I think the select board was asked to write us a letter of support for this grant. Mm -hmm. um, you know about that, right? A lot about that, don't you? Um, so, I, I mean, this whole question of town water is very, is a really important salient point, like you just said. Mm -hmm. The water department does have a master plan. I don't know if it outlines, you know, their sort of. I'm assuming it must outline customers and where they are physically and yeah I was going to say the, that the, uh, the population they serve town water versus wells would be a statistic yeah they, they must just, have that. oh yeah because I mean they have the number of meters they have the grant application I'm just trying to yeah pull I it haven't up seen it but we could probably get it but Kurt Beaujolais is apparently going to come to the planning board meeting tomorrow night so okay he can help us with that but. yeah well, Page 13, it said at the time of writing that residential village and commercial village were town water, um, which those are new terms to me. <laughs> so, um, but those are like Route 10, it says Camden Ponds, County Line, Town Line Meadow, and Gun Lake. Mm -hmm. So, that's at the time of writing. So the gun road itself as well, not but the, the area on the way toward um, toward East Hampton, all the commercial district is going to be town water, I would assume. Toward East Hampton? I think that might be some of it might be East Hampton, or, or maybe East Hampton. Okay. I think the car wash is hooked right into East Hampton, but that yeah. may just be for water disposal. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I, I mean, water. you know, we're, sure. we're the first house on Gun Road from Route 10, and we had a well when I'm growing up, which then when the cows got more and more, my dad. Somehow, we, with the water thing, we, we tapped into the local hydrant right up the end of Gun Road. And so we knew a guy, yeah. So we, we actually had water from from the end of the College Highway Gun Road connection just down to our farm, and that was it. And then the rest of Gun Road is still on well. And I know that because we had a water problem with the hydrant last year. And they came out and said, well, where's your water? It's like, well, I don't know. I think it's up there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then when Fletcher's came, they put in a separate line to their to their barn. But um, so most of our road, as far as I know, is still on well water. So yeah, I would be curious, but they should know the number of meters. But it would be interesting to know the, mm -hmm. the level of uh, so part of tonight, you you keep saying we need to delve into this. I'm just yeah. wondering. If we well, no, I mean we're raising, I think, questions about additional information that we, you know, questions that came up as a result of reading this because of how dated some of the information is, and wanting to have a better understanding. That's okay too. Mm -hmm. Could I share sure. some information with you? Um, when the town of Southampton sends out the census at the end of the year, we've done this once before, ask, develop your, your questionnaire, keep it simple. It can go out with oh, the good. tax bills. You won't have any extra postage. Hmm. And we've gotten excellent results from hmm. that method. Good response, That's right? a good idea. Yeah. That's a great idea. And you've got lots of questions that are already in here 
that came from the visioning um, <coughs> workshop that was mm -hmm. done when this master plan was developed. So the questions are still valid. Okay. Well, I volunteered to find out a little more about when they developed that questionnaire and what kind of time frame is that? Do you think it's already been developed, the, the one they did with the census? Well, is it too late? It's already available? No, no, it's not too late. Okay. That goes out. Um, does it for the first of the year? Yeah, for the first of the year. But if, if you've got a good list, list of questions uh, and it's not too water extensive, water then we do. <laughs> you can include it. And we got wonderful oh, responses. That's a, good, that's a very good Who idea. Does that, the town clerk or the town administration? Yeah. We would, your committee would develop based on, on the same kind of questions. But they, they're not new questions, really. Does it go from the clerk? Does the questionnaire come yes. from the clerk? Yeah, I mean, she's the one who sends it out. Okay. Right. I'll ask Janine. Yeah, exactly. before she leaves. She leaves? Retiring. Yeah. She's retiring. She's retiring? I didn't know that, Bill. Did you know that? Oh, no, last night. Mm -hmm. You found, you found out, last out last night? night? Yeah, it's just, it's just. Oh. Do you know a date on that? I think the end of the month. Mm -hmm. I just got sworn in. She didn't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, you know. It's, it's. Oh, did you know, Mike? Is that? She told me the day I got one. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I know that she's, yeah. I know that she's been telling people, like, I don't know that there's been a public announcement yet. Well, because we're on camera. So. No, yes, there now. is a public announcement. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was announced at the select board meeting. That's right. Yes, thank you. So there are, so it was. There are 4,000. Customers for the water department in town, 4,012. Is that very current? Because I was going to toss out 4,700. So this is off their master plan, which looks like has statistics up to 2015. Yeah, I think for the grant application. It's dated 2016. 4,000 customers? Customers. So it not be, households, because there's not even no. 5,000 people no. in town. No. So every development. They're probably counting the number of people in the house, the number, number of beds, maybe. Yeah, they say it must be. I was looking for the number of meters on here to kind of, because that'll give you the number of buildings, but. Right. Um, it can't be 4,000 bills because there's only. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it serves approximately 4,000 of the town's residents, so I don't know if they include every student in school. I, I'm sure that they count. Along with their the house. Areas. I don't know how that works, but yeah. it, the number does seem a bit high. Mm. Yeah. But like you said, they have the Pequot area, so there's a lot of housing in that area. I don't know. Right. If it's just a matter of they're not even counting schools or whatever, which would be a big consumer of water, but they're just looking at housing and that they're counting bedrooms. But, but right. in 2010, they had... 2,250 households. I know that's eight years ago, but we haven't doubled, so they're probably counting yeah, numbers. Yeah, people, are, people like you said, rather pets. than households. Oh, well, Miss Lady, you're guessing it's bad, it's higher tax. That report would also allow you to um, read who uses how much water. It's complete in there. Mm -hmm. Who are the big right. water users mm -hmm. and how much water are they using? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it came out, um, I think, the beginning of last year. Okay. It was required by the state. And you can get it online. It's on the are you available as a consultant? Are you available as a consultant? She'll be here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> now this is this is that's information. All right. So we talked a little bit about. Well, now we talked about the number of households. We that we need to get a handle on that. Same with the population, the distribution of the population. I think we can see from here the way it's going, but mm. in terms of age groups, but. Um, if you can get a little. What page is that on? Page 11. Um, but, um. 10 and 11. What am I thinking? 
thinking? I'm thinking that almost 25% of the population of people over the age of 62 or 65, it's a, it's 65. in 2010, yeah. house, well, households with individuals 65 and over, 25%. That's what that's saying. And then in the next table, they broke it down from 50 to 59 and 60 to 69, and that was 32% total right. there. So yes. Anyway, it's in that that range, but I think that you know that aging population is definitely. A, I, I think it's increased. Yeah, since well, I would imagine for since then. I think that that statistic itself. I mean, not knowing a whole lot about the inside of town, that and also the the people at poverty level were was surprising to me. Those statistics at that point in time. Mm -hmm. So wherever that might be now, um, but that was. Um, was it 12 something? It's 12 percent. No, no, that was the students. Sorry. You're talking about the students that came. Yeah, that was the students. Uh, yeah, lunch the program. Lunch yeah. program. 20, 12 percent of the students, uh, sixth grade or something like that. I think mm -hmm. it was yeah. sixth grade and younger. Yeah, and but five percent of individuals living in town had incomes below the poverty line in 2005 to nine. So that's again, it's just and that was really before. You know the economic downturn right. that we're still recovering yeah. from yeah. for some of those folks. Anyway, I think it just makes the case that we've got to have some affordable housing units. <laughs> so I think mm -hmm. that yeah. there's just no question about that, and, and how we how we go about it. I guess is this is this right. In terms of the profile of Southampton compared with neighboring communities, uh, it's pretty interesting that it has the largest growth. Yes. That mm -hmm. by substa substantially larger growth. Shockingly so. 30% yes. as opposed to 3% mm -hmm. mm -hmm. in the area. That mm -hmm. is a shocking. Mm -hmm. And the housing values. And, and I the think that the growth place. is in part because not only of our beautiful rural character, um, Accessibility to 91, accessibility to working in Springfield or Hoyoke or Greenfield, or my son commutes all the way down to West Hartford. He lives here in Southampton. Um, so people commute easily from Southampton. But on top of that, the schools. They, they, mm -hmm. This was considered a school that people wanted to go to, the North School. But am I right in terms of the schools that the school choice numbers have actually decreased? Yeah. We, Correct. Yeah. yeah there is an awaiting list. Yeah. And there's, there's room for new students. There's, was it more than two years ago, there was never room for new students. Now there's empty seats. There's empty seats, and that's affected right. our town right. um, finance, correct? Right. And, the, and the school budget. I think there are, because I'm on both committees, I'm, you know, and without my papers, I'm a little confused. I think there are 57 school choice this year in Norris. Last year was 64. Right. So it's, and then and I, I look back a number of years, and it's never been this low. Mm -hmm. yeah. Last year there was empty seats. Is that because our school isn't as attractive to the outlying communities, the parents, or because the other schools have improved? There's probably a lot of factors. I mean, there's more charter schools. There's more opportunities. Opportunities, more choices. It, it could be a mix of everything. Yeah. Okay. Less children in that age, age range yeah. in the town. Because the, yeah, the population growth is not at the, that lower age, that school age. It's all at the other end. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, just that's probably hard to, to nail down what the factor is. Mm -hmm. Um, I found a good population website, towncharts.com, um, and they are on your computer if you want to go on it too, but um, it tells you, like you can compare, it says to West Hampton, Westfield, Southampton, obviously here, uh, Russell, Montgomery, Holyoke, and East Hampton. You can compare to like all those, um, and it has X amount of figures, like I'm still scrolling. Um, over 40 figures that they compare um, as of 2016. So it's closer years, than yes. what we have now. We're current. Yeah. Um, and like the median age is just under 50, it shows. And there's 6,081 people okay. as of 2016. 
And what's the source for this? Uh, Towncharts.com. But what's their source for the data? Is it oh. census data, or I assume? Um, American Community Survey. So it's the closest thing to right now, like right in this instance that we mm -hmm. have to go off of. But 2017 American Community Survey for the population. And it's already at 6,081 for South mm -hmm. And on the census.gov, it said that it was only showing populations above 5,000, but it only showed Southampton as East Hampton Town. So I kind of averted that okay. situation That's and went really, to this yeah. one. Um, okay. But it does show a lot of comparing and contrasting. So. And this was done in 16, you said? Because mm -hmm. interesting, like, a line in here is that with the current rate of growth, Southampton's population could be expected to surpass 6,000 by 2020. Yeah, I know. So it's already there that four years ago. Yes. Yeah. 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 yes. I mean, I'm thinking this is accurate. Mm. I, think it's, I think we need to be cautious. I just, what is town survey done? Exactly. And there's another one mm. called Massachusetts Hometown, and it says it's got 2017 data. So, okay. and it says total population of 6,139. Um, I, I kind of agree with you. I don't know whether right. how they're getting this data and whether it's meant to support realtors or you know, yeah. people, you know banks or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it mm -hmm. really all of the above? Yeah, I, right. <laughs> Total housing units, 2,423. I don't know where they got their data. Oh, actually, right here it says according to the most recent demographics data available from the Census Bureau released in December of 17. Okay. Fourth oh, mm -hmm. in population out of ten total in the area. I don't know, it was just a resource. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hmm. yeah, it's good to tap into these resources, but cautiously. Yeah. Yeah. No. You. I mean, if that says a hundred, like six thousand, a hundred, mm -hmm. and this is six thousand, you know. It's yeah. It's close. Increasing. It's increasing. A, a year yeah. difference. So that, that sounds about right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you're new people. Oh. Yeah, what, towncharts.com? Yeah. And Cindy, yours as well? Um, hold on. It's called... It's Massachusetts. Yeah. Massachusetts dot Massachusetts dot hometown. Here it is. Hometown locator, one word. Massachusetts dot hometown locator dot com. Okay. What other things that you were in jump out or you think we need to I, I could, I, this is just from previous experience. There's a couple instances in here where they talk about Southampton kind of acting as a real estate agent with buying properties, developing properties, and I just, I would just recommend cautiously looking at that because, you know, where we are today financially, where we are two years from now financially, it may be better, but it's not going to be to a point where you can afford the financial resources and the personnel resources to undertake that. So, you know, pursuing some sort of development goal is good, but that development being done by someone else and not being taken on by the town because it could, it could be too much. And sometimes I've seen instances where towns have done that. They've acquired properties like this. They've tried to get local trade schools to help with the rehab, the rebuild. And the towns end up selling those houses at auction for maybe what they paid for it originally because it's just not something in their wheelhouse they can handle. So. It's, it's an interesting point because in the Housing Authority Board, we've talked about that and the risk mm. with that not only can the town afford it, but you know, right. you, you put this money out there and now the town owns something it really doesn't want to own. And what happens if it doesn't turn over the way you expect it? Now you're sitting there holding this. Right. Because we have CPA funds, I don't know if it will allow us to buy things like that. But even we discuss even if we could, the substantial risk in doing that, and right. that's really not a. There are other. There's probably um, less riskier options to pursue right. than the town being a homeowner, even if it's short term. Right. You know, if there's um, some kind of a 
know what you would call it, a, a trust or something well, like that. It mean, could be an here. intermediary. Yeah. Right, that was mentioned. Yeah. We'd have to really look into that, because right. I, I would, I'm a cautious person by nature when it comes to money, so. Um, right. It's, it's risky I'm business. Channeling what you're saying. Yeah. It's risky business for professional developers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Never mind unprofessional mm -hmm. right, municipal volunteers and employees. Mm -hmm. um, and then it asks, you know, it also begs the question <coughs> if you're purchasing property for future development or placing it into a trust, you are then removing it from the tax roll, creating another, creating a town owned, uh, town -owned property that's untaxable, hoping for future development. So you, you almost need to line things up. So if you were to acquire a property, mm -hmm. there's a way to turn it around to get it back as a tax generating opportunity. And it's not a lot, but you know, it's every dime and penny helps. Cool. Something I, this is just a small critique on page 15, it talks about ownership status and it talks about rental units. Um, they compare Southampton to Southampton as far fewer rental units than its neighboring communities and it lists Huntington, Holyoke, Westfield. And with the exception maybe of Huntington, I mean those, those are more, quote, urban settings with public transportation infrastructure. So you're not gonna get a lot of renters in Southampton, you know, unless there's a regular bus service to East right. Hampton or whatnot, or even to the big Y <laughs> um, to shop. So I, I think Southampton probably maybe more realistic comparison would be, again, compares to West Hampton. How many rental units are in West Hampton? Probably not a lot. Um, so right. And it, it is an odd, comparison because it's there's financial demographics associated with that too right mm -hmm. so major rental units or large blocks of rental units mm -hmm. that, you know they, they could be below the median income value or medium income depending on where you're right. looking which and to support again units like that you need not only the infrastructure you just need the public service there, I think right. transportation mm -hmm. to make that work mm -hmm. Yeah. Or situated, yeah, transportation or situated in a downtown area where things are accessible. Right. Yeah, if they had access to the downtown area, is, I mean, right. doesn't offer a range of things. You know, the grocery store and the drugstore. You still got to walk three miles yeah. to downtown. Hall. Yeah. Right. So, you know, over by the big Y, whatever, that does have possibilities because grocery. Mm -hmm. Pharmacy, That's where they call banking, the room property. Right. Yeah. With you have banking there. You have yeah. you've got a mm -hmm. hardware store. You've got a clothing mm -hmm. store. So you really an auto parts store is coming in. Yeah. Can't can't wait. Wait. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. It's amazing that 70%, according to this, 70% of the housing units were built before 1940. And that's probably changed. Yeah, I'm Since sure it's was gone, built. yes, yeah. because there's so much. <clears throat> yeah. So we have another question um, yeah. on page. That's what this says. It seems odd. And again, if we get some, yeah. I don't know how. If you we consider get this where the, like, the markers of major population growth were, it seems weird that 70% were built. That has before. to be inaccurate because yeah. then they say 46% built between 40 and 59. Yeah, I, yeah, I see that. That's 100. That's 110%. Yes. So that's, it, that's inaccurate. And then 12%. Oh, no. Well, then that was before. Well, 12% before 1940. Oh, no, no, no. That okay. says those bu buildings have significant lead-based paint yes. hazards. Mm -hmm. Of that number, yes. But 12% of single-family homes were built before 1940. 1940. That's, yes. That seems about right. Yeah. 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 Well, this has to do not when they were built, but that's that they right. had the lead-based lead -based paint. paint. Yes. Seventy percent lead-based paint. Okay. Oh, okay. Forty yeah. percent. Yeah. Yes. That's Between yeah. those years, mm -hmm. right. the twelve percent built in 1940, 25 built before 1960. Okay. That makes sense. Go back with the discussion of the apartments. What I was 
reading something and I forgot what it is now about the uh, the need to change some regulation about the apartment size in town so that if people so yes. as, as as accessory to yes. so if you had a large home and you could convert yeah. part of it to a separate apartment that's okay. correct yes. I think the limit now is 600 to, yeah, to 800 they're yeah. talking mm -hmm. but, but again there's a proposed bylaw change that will increase the size of that mm -hmm. so oh, so that's being worked on to be a large yes yeah. okay I understand that's part of the proposed bylaw changes um, I have a question about, we were talking about infrastructure and the availability to tap into East Hampton, not just with water, but also their sewer, you know, with the area by the town line there. I don't know if this was a rumor or not, but they were talking about, you know, when they, the possibility when they build the greenway is to also run a sewer line as you're building the greenway that would hook in with East Hampton that could come right into town that could expand residential. Because another problem with building some tighter residential units that have multiple units is you just don't have the septic capacity. Uh, right. But if you had sewer access. But that's just what I've heard. I don't know if anyone's heard that, that that was a, a sewer line running essentially it's, down the old railroad tracks. It's been a stumbling block because some people think that that's a good idea and other people do not think it's a good idea but the uh, rail bed being fairly level and East Hampton I believe has the capacity to accept from South Hampton but there were discussions about valuation and could it actually be used to um, put in sewer lines. Mm -hmm. So there's been discussion about it. It's been ongoing for quite some time. It becomes difficult to maintain. There's a break in the middle, right? Uh, I mean, I don't know how long the, the path would be, but between one road and another, if there's a break in a joint in the middle, it becomes a problem and a mess to pick up. You know, you know, it's not like it's accessible by the side of the road. No, I mean, well, spike paths you can get. I mean, if we're not talking about a paved bike path, even if it's just you know a compact, if it's wide enough for a truck to get down. If it's that long, it's probably under some sort of pressure. Mm -hmm. And when a pressured sewer line goes, it's it's messy. It, it's it's just a problem, and it's. You end up having to bring vehicles in from either side to work and excavate. And I'm not discouraging. It's one of those things where, yeah. you, right? It's different. You're saying it's different than one that runs down the street because it's the right. one down the street doesn't have to be so pressured because it's not as long. Or well, no, it's just easily accessible. If there's ever an issue, you can pull up, turn valve, close valves, operate on it. If it's in the middle of a rail trail somewhere in the woods, mm -hmm. you know you're. All the people who feed in that system yeah. can't flush their toilets. Yeah. So I'm trying to, I mean, I see water breaks. I'm trying to remember the last time a sewer line broke and caused problems. Well, I mean, the good news for us, we don't have them to break. That's right. <laughs> in this town, but I mean, I, I, That's an excellent point. When you think about it, you know, you see on the news, you know, it's a water line break, so a sewer line break. Mm. So I, to know what well, I, I saw something in the news that was kind of a gross thing about a sewer line issue in, yeah. a, in a large city and, and the um, inappropriate disposal of non-decomposing mm -hmm. items and et cetera, et cetera. And it's kind of a sad situation. So, right. Right. so, so it's, a, it's a point well taken. Yeah. Right? And I think you'd have but to have brand new, If it's a brand new sewer yeah. line, it's... And maybe there's a way in that's right. sort of in the middle, but... but you know, some trails I'm familiar with, I mean, some towns actually plow them, so I know they're accessible by truck. Um, so I guess that's the question. Can you get a, a large truck? Because you only have to go one way to get there, and then you can keep going once you're done or whatever, or back up a long way. But another question is, what is the status of the group? Right, right. Yeah. 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 they're tied yeah. together. And all the other 
um, municipal um, infrastructure projects that our town just. That does going. also so that changes the the characteristic of the road you have to build as well. So it would have to be like an HD20 rated road for highway, for large equipment and excavators. It, it changes what you can drive down there, mm -hmm. which could be a cost increase for the Greenway, depending. Sure. I mean, I don't know if it's how they're built, if it's gravel, compacted gravel with filter fabric and you know pavement or whatever, but in general, to bring down heavier equipment, it's, you know, there's highway standards. And, so but is, is that for roadways, or does it matter for pathways? Or well, you it's need not to get, like your regular well, you're not, you're not building it because of the, it needs to be built for whatever you're servicing, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're servicing something with a triaxle dump truck, very well may have to drive down there. It needs to be built to withstand the weight of 11, you know, 11 yards of material or nine yards of material in the dump truck, and that's, that's heavy. Yeah. So it has to be built up and, for that. I think we have the engine work in our midst. Right. Does it require that for regular use, or is there a different requirement for occasional use of the 11 yard? See what I'm saying? Well, I mean, once use is forever, right? Yeah. So there's no such thing as a occasional use when yeah. you build something like that. It needs to, yes. if it, it could fail tomorrow or it could fail five years from now, it needs to support it yeah. immediately going forward, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. jumping back on a question yes. on um, page 13, I was talking about um, increasing the, the housing diversity by establishing more zoning districts. Mm -hmm. Is that something that's happening, or is that an action to happen, or uh, toward the bottom of 13? I, see, I um, see that. I read that, too. I'm not sure that I could that. Establishing one or more new zoning districts with more flexible dimension standards um, has identified three areas along College Highway. The Village Center, Midtown, Home Run, Metter to Gun Road, and the Gateway area along the East Hampton Town Line. So I was wondering, as whatever is happening with the, the red barn up at the at Coleman Road, is that part of the new zoning, or is that something else completely? It's a very new uh, idea or concept. Coming up. Francine would probably know more about it than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that I know about the property. That's about yeah. it for now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But is it property town owned? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. No, it's available. Yes, mm -hmm. it's available. Yeah. But so. Yeah, no, I was just wondering, if, you know, if there if, if there was an option to you know create some some special zones that would be potentially doable for affordable housing. Mm -hmm. It makes this recommendation, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. Again, if there's been really any active thought about it. I don't think there's been much active thought. <laughs> mm -hmm. no. I think it, essentially this plan has languished since um, the day it was completed. A few actions were taken, you know, a few, maybe for the first year it was attended to, but not since. Mm -hmm. One of the other points on page 14 that it has to be considered is this whole concept of how much of our town lies over the barn's aquifer and the protection of that. And um, mm -hmm. I know that the planning board was um, asked to um, review and, and permit um, a new church that's they purchased property on the corner of Valley Road and Route 10. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going south, towards Westfield, it would be on your left, just before Valley Road. It's totally undeveloped at this point. Not only is there w uh, water issues in terms of um, conservation of wetlands, et cetera, but then there's also this whole idea of the presence of the Brown Barnes Aquifer. And I, I, I believe, I know that the last meeting I attended, I've, I've been away for a month, so I haven't attended a couple of planning board meetings, but there was this request to have an, an external review, you know, kind of a peer review from another engineering firm about the proposal that was coming in. But that's just one spot. Mm -hmm. And the Barnes Aquifer is a it's large huge. aquifer, yes. right. So all of our discussion of planning and building and 
all these other issues like disposal of wastewater and sewage and all that. This whole Barnes Aquifer for thing has to be taken into consideration. There is a committee for that. The yes, Aquifer. there is. Yeah. But the, the, I don't know how many towns. Is it just Westfield and um, no, Southampton? It's, or no, it's more? Westfield, uh, West Hampton, East Hampton, oh. Southampton. Well, it's going to say part five, of it. four, four just towns. Four. Yeah. Westfield, Holyoke. East Hampton, South Hampton. Okay. And West, not West, West Hampton. West Hampton. Okay. Not. Okay. So it's just another factor that has to be considered before, you know, in terms of development and building things. Yeah, I mean, there's, and that's why in updating some of these strategies, mm -hmm. yeah. barriers like that that may have been identified subsequent to this mm -hmm. document need to be addressed because they may come off the you know they may come off the list or you know we might have to find another way of doing it mm -hmm. well, I think you know still trying on that same page um, and going back to the notion of the nine units versus the ten the developers not really abiding by by the intent of what might be wanted in town there this whole notion here about giving some incentives to developers, you know, it's, it's laid out here on page 14 about, you know, mm -hmm. to, that they have to include a certain number of, of affordable housing units. I mean, I think that's something that... Did you um, say that the sense. housing board was going to be meeting with some developers? Wasn't there, is there a meeting? November has it taken 26. place? November 26th? Mm -hmm. Just to have some conversations and see, okay. you know, within the existing situation, what we can do to help promote. I, I, you know, sometimes I think, you know, it's, we can try to zone and regulate, and that's great. But if we, we want to start with, before we go there, just have some conversations. Mm. We can, you know, there may be some misconceptions. Um, there may be people willing to, but they worry about, they have to look, obviously, at the cost side of it. And we have money, so we can help make, make that happen. And, and again, I'm just learning, but what I understand, part of the affordable housing, you know, when you build affordable housing, the state requires that, for example, it has a refrigerator. Um, so the CPA, we have CPA money, we can buy the refrigerator. So that might help the builder a little bit. And little, you know, just things like that that can help make, help a, a builder who, you know, like any of us needs to make a living, you know, cross that line from yeah. where it's not affordable to where it might be affordable. Yeah. Well, I guess, and I'm, I'm totally ignorant of what's what's the difference about that tenth unit being an affordable housing unit? How is how is it building material or anything any different from the other nine next well, door? Well, I think I think that's, <laughs> that's I, I think that's been you know, they want it to be comparable to some other houses. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just sell it. And I'm just learning this too, but you have to sell it, you know, within the range, depending on the size of the number of beds, you know, within the median range for the region as set by HUD. I see. Okay. And so, you know, the way you can do that is you build a duplex, for example, or you, know, mm -hmm. you, you find some cost savings that way. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying that I'm here, at least they were talking about some possible incentives as an idea for the builders, which, mm -hmm. you know, fee waivers and things like that that mm -hmm. might be something that could attract them to abide by the notion of a 10 unit mm -hmm. <laughs> rather than a 9 unit. Mm -hmm. okay. In case anyone wants to go back to the statistics of when, you know, what percentage of houses were built at what, during what time frame, on page 17, there's a very nice pie chart. Tells all that. Anyway, um, other, other comments people want to make on this? Um, I have a item. question, um, and I don't know the answer to this. Pomeroy Village, which is right between the post office and North School, that's not affordable housing, is it? Because that doesn't fall in the category of fo affordable housing. It's it wasn't have, identified in here as it as being was affordable it built. Housing. I think it was built. I think it's elderly housing. I think it's more senior, over 55. I don't think it's limited to. I think you have to, to be senior. But 
I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. I think you have to be a senior, though. I think you do, too. You do? I think I was in sixth grade when they started building it, and we were wondering who was going to be living there, and they were kind of telling us a little bit of it, because we were asking and inquiring minds, and I think you do have to be over it looks like that of the people I know that are there, they're <laughs> over 55. Which is it? I'm sorry. It's a, um, like a condo development, you know, where the post office is, you know, or it's where the school is. Well, it's it's the 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 no, it's yeah. called Pomeroy Village. Pomeroy Village. Yes. So the, they're all one? Yes. Yes. One yeah. On the right hand side there? Yes. Frank Ferry is open. They're quite nice inside. Yeah. There could have been. I think that would have been a great it's opportunity. Somebody was mentioned in here. Yeah. If the bylaw was, I don't know if it was five instead of ten. They were there. I mean, they've been there since I lived here. Oh, that now? was 2010, so they aren't they mentioned in this report okay. per se. Yeah, they're not. Because they, mm. I think that was a misstep. So I'm not sure what they consider it. They've categorized it for the purposes of this. I haven't checked into that. I'm too young. I'm <laughs> open. <laughs> All right. Now it's eight thirty. I want to be, um, you know, aware of people's time frames. So let's. I don't want to cut anybody off, but. So we've got to go back between now and. The 19th. The 19th. And try to find out answers and speak to our boards and committees. And on, on, for the, the goals that we've outlined as having been achieved in, in, and to determine whether or not there are others that we should be recording and or others that may have barriers that need to be rethought in terms of it being a possibility. So um, that would be that would be one thing. Mike said he would do the demographics. Mm -hmm. And then if we can divide up among the at large and my and myself, I'll include myself with because I know there's the, the select board is on here, but I think that's the you know that's the point of last contact. So the others like the agricultural commission, the greenway committee, that don't have representation on this. I uh, between myself, Chris and, and Mike, can we divide that up? Sure. No idea who to contact for sure. <laughs> okay. I can take the like the public services and facilities groups if you want. Okay, so, so highway like and the, yeah, the town highway and water. Okay, that's good. Because I know the as long as they answer the phone. Right? Okay, Chris, do you have any affinity for? It doesn't matter. I can deal with the agricultural commission or something there. I suppose. Okay. I'll do. I'll do the COA. Can you tap into the, the um, through the water department? You should get inf you be able to get information on the Bar Barnes Act for Protection Advisory sure. Council. That's listed here as well. Um, Recreation is on here. So we do the highway plan. That's a big chunk. I'll take school committee since I'm the liaison. Is there a Greenway committee? Or? Yes, there is. Mm -hmm. Try to tackle that. Do you want to take that first? Or? I can give you the contact on that. I don't have a clue on agriculture. But do you know? Besides one of the Fletchers. I uh, uh, yeah. um, Bishista. Okay. Steve? Uh, I'm not sure okay. which position. Which is to okay. No, I think it might be Tom. Okay. Oh, yeah, good. Okay. And the Greenway is um, Mike Bueller. Okay. That's right. B-E-U-E-A-T. B-U-E-A-T. 
H A L E R. I think. I don't know. I, I, or B-E-U. Okay. <laughs> um, and so, and you said you would do the library? Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to see, is there any other that we haven't covered? Do you see any others? Housing authority? Oh, we have, have some of these houses. <clears throat> Conservation Commission? Who's that? John. Oh, John, yeah. John is conservation. Did you with John? Yeah. Uh, he was know, at the we meeting. We exchanged emails this week. Or, yeah, last week. And I was huh. pretty certain, I felt pretty certain he was coming. He was apologetic that he missed the other meeting. But I'll check in again. I'll check in again with Marla. He's coming to the meeting on the 11th. <laughs> yeah, that's the bad no, news. <laughs> I wrote him specifically. I told him, I sent him the same Please. email I sent you. The 6th and the 19th. That I know. Okay, so yes, I'll get in touch there and see what we can do. All right, and do we have an energy committee? I was going to ask, does that, does that exist? Well, I haven't heard anything of that, so let's... I mean, I haven't looked at Chapter 7, but a lot of these are definitely taken care of. Okay. Like the goals that have been completed. I don't know what other ones are All out right. there, but okay. a lot of these should be, I think, yeses or noes, because yeah, a lot of them I mean, have been done in the last three years, so yes. I think you or I would know. Okay, so just to bring this up to date, add to it any that they have achieved that we're not aware of yet, That'll get that, and we'll touch base with the other com other committees not not represented here. And what else? I mean, in terms of the when do you want these by? I'm sorry. I, next meeting. I'd like to see if we can get a, a good chunk of it done by next meeting. If you're having, and the problem is if you're if you're having a meeting. Okay. I don't know that we're scheduled to have a meeting, but I can okay. solicit. Do the best you can, yeah. but um, you can do a lot. For as soon, yeah. yes, yeah. As, as soon as as we can, because yeah. that's going to help us then, as we move through this document, develop that priority list of things that we're going to be looking at. And you want to look at just that one page that you got as the handover to you, not the whole chapter nine with all the recommendations, right? We're just looking at that one page that. Yeah, yeah, I suppose it's short. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'd be sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, what about a vice chair? No, I would vice chair. Would that, Chris, would you be interested in being vice chair? Oh, I can tackle that, I think, probably. Okay. Sure. All right. Can we just vote on the whole slate? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's, is there a motion to populate the slate? <laughs> so moved. Yeah. Let's go. All right. Second. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yay. Congratulations. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> the meeting for the 19th is posted already, and the agenda is posted as well. I mean, after I did it, did miss it the first time, I was not going to miss it. <laughs> so I did, I did it twice. I did two. So. There you go. Um, I, I have uh, developed a bad habit of traveling a lot these days, as people know, and I know that I'm going to be gone for a portion of January, um, and we might be able to plan around that, so it may not be a problem, but um, it might be that somebody else might want to slip into the clerk position just for one and not So here. we need a vice clerk. A vice clerk. <laughs> a vice clerk. <laughs> vice clerk, Megan? Okay. 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 All right. right. We All right. agree yes. to her on the slate? All yes. 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 Slate. yes. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Yeah. And then we're right. done with school, Thank so I you. can take on more right. responsibility. Right. 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 Yeah. Which Thank is why you. I wasn't very yeah. volunteering. So that's great. Okay. okay, we've all worked school once. Well, and we can use your research skills too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, which, on that, um, <laughs> the Pomeroy Village was built in 2004, and I graduated in 2009, so that is not accurate what I said, and it does not state 55 and over. Really? But this um, is on Zillow, so it could. Could. Not say stuff, and it could say stuff too. So, I mean, one of the issues in the in the report was that elderly is not even defined, right? Right. right. You That's know, right. in terms of what what age. Right. 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 It's it's kind of like, yeah. yeah. Right. So it's interesting. Yeah. But. Okay, and then we each have our assignments to reach out to those other committees and bring that information in about the rules. Chapter two. And and we have chapter two. Yeah. Right. Keep Correct. us on track. Yeah. Does everybody feel, I mean, should we structure the discussion differently as we go through this? I think it's going well. I mean, there may need to be some sort of, I don't know, a visual outline of okay. what the goals are. Well, Margaret said she was going to do um, some kind of a, a spreadsheet. She, she was. Here tonight. Something, yeah. So as you're reading chapter one through nine or whatever yeah. chapter you're on, you at least know what goals are complete, what goals may be in progress, I what think goals she's, are... That's yeah. she's 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 gonna, gonna, that was right. chapter, matrix chapter kind of 9 thing. that's got, yeah. got all that yeah. for each yeah. one. Yeah. But she was going to try and break it Expand out into the short, yeah. short term ones or whatever yeah. she's yeah. going to do. Yeah. Just for conversation piece. Yeah. Yeah. We're well, to keep us kind of fun. Yeah, it's nice to have a Yeah, because this is really, you know, there's a whole lot here in terms of... Yes. Like <laughs> right. yeah, strategy, so. if, if you create the visual now, it, it's much yeah. easier to report out on, right? So you modify it during the review process, and then it's yeah. it's kind of an ongoing yeah. living document that you could bring to the select board, or you know, we can use to, yeah. to review things. Mm -hmm. I can just ask a question because I know nothing about the Greenway Committee. The only one here I see that talks about the Greenway was support the establishment of a Greenway. That would connect the historic center of town to East Hampton's Manan Trail. It's like, okay, what does support mean? <laughs> and it's got conservation, greenway, planning, and it's like very, Yeah, it's a very thing. Oh. Well, they have to acquire a property, and I mean, there's just there's okay. so many steps. So, if there's involved. some action that they've started to take, is the question. Yeah. Okay. So, so my viewers are yes. very involved in a historian. You can bring you, you guys <laughs> to speak. Yeah. It's a hard Perfect. working town. Great volunteer. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah. And there have been so many barriers that got thrown mm -hmm. down on okay. us. I mean, like one after another. Right? Over a very long period yeah. of time. Yeah. It's, it's really it's tragic because we are the only town that yeah. doesn't have it. That's it. From that's yeah, from correct. Belcher yeah. town to Connecticut, we're the only break in the bike in the in the greenway. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're beyond Belcher town. Yeah. But all right, now we said to schedule the meeting for the nineteenth. We said we would not meet in December. Is that correct? Okay. So do you want to look at January now, or do you want to deal with that? at our November, at the 19th meeting? I would say the 19th. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do it on the 19th? Okay. Yeah. All right. So there we go. All right. So we'll see everybody before Thanksgiving. Right. Yes.
Um, there we go. I appreciate y'all coming. I'll try to reach out to Marla and to John to see if we can get them there. We know Margaret will be on board. And uh, we'll still try to twist some arms for at large number four. Okay. Agreed. Thinking. Okay. All right. Very good. So is there a motion to adjourn? I motion we adjourn. I will second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 And it's 845. Okay. Good night, all. 845. Good night. Mm -hmm.